So today I'm going to talk to you about the SB200 booster. How to set it up, how to operate it, and hopefully, though it won't require it, how to sort out any problems you might have. Now the 200 booster is designed to work with the SB200, and it does what it says on the tin, basically. It's a booster. Here we've got a really big air conditioning fan, and that's designed to move a, a lot of air. Inside the nozzle, we have a snow generator that makes the snow, and combining the two things together, we can propel the snow higher into the air and spread it over a large area. When you're setting up the machine, make sure you've got it on a nice, flat, dry, dust-free surface. Um, there are three positions that we can set the machine up in. Vertical, like this. We can rock it forwards to set it at 45 degrees, or we can angle it like that to shoot out the snow horizontally. At the back of the machine, we've got these wheels, and if we tip the machine back like this and grab hold of the handle in the front, we can move it around quite easily. Now, there aren't many parts that come with the 200, and the parts that do come with them are stored inside the nozzle. So when you get the machine, check that you've got this grey cable, which will allow you to connect it to the SP200, and that you've got the power cable here, which has this little adapter on the end. If you've got a Euro C form 16 amp connection, you can use it. But if, like most people, all you've got is a UK 3-pin plug, then you can just plug this in, and that will go into a normal household plug. Now, on the back of the machine, we have the control panel. Here we've got a three position switch. Um, down is manual and in that position the fan will run all the time. In the middle is off and in the top, when the switch is at the top, that's in the automatic position. Um, in the automatic position the machine will be triggered by the SP200 and the fan inside will only come on when the SP200 wants it to. This is the remote control socket for connecting the SB200 booster to the SB200. And up here we've got the, the connection for the air and for the fluid into the machine. So, to connect the machine up, we take our grey control cable, either end, they're both the same, and we plug it in, like that, and screw it down nice and tight. There you go. We can select the automatic position because we're going to be running it straight from the SB200 today. And next, we want to connect, first of all, the fluid line. We've got this little blue connector here. It may be on either end of the cable. Generally, it's on this end. Um, push it in nice and tight. Um, if you don't, it can leak. A quick tip, when you're taking these apart, don't just tug because it won't come apart. Pull the blue ring back with your fingers, like that. Push that down. Then pull the cable out comes away much easier. Okay, and then what we do is we connect the air. So that feeds back up in there, like so. And then these two clamps on the side, we just uh, pull those back. If it's a little stiff for whatever reason, don't force it. It probably means that the fluid cable inside has just got caught up. So it should be quite easy to do. So apart from the on-off auto switch on the SB200 booster, there are no other controls. So the, uh, the fan is set in here to run at constant speed, but the control of the snowflake size is all done on the SB200. Okay, so you've connected your SB200 booster and for some reason you're not getting any snow. What do you need to check? Well, the first thing, and it seems really obvious, but sometimes we overlook it, is that it's actually connected to the mains and that the mains hasn't tripped out. So make sure you've got a good power supply to the machine. The next thing to check is that your manual auto switch is in the right position. If you're running it from the SB200, then it needs to be in the auto position. If that's correct, still not making any snow, make sure that the remote connector is in and, and firmly attached at both ends, also at the SB200 end, and also check that the SB200 is working properly. Finally, if it's still not snowing, then what you can do is disconnect the airline and just check that you haven't got a kink in the line. See, there's a kink there. Now, if you've got a kink in the fluid line, what will happen is, although it's pumping fluid to the machine, it won't be getting to the snow generator, so it won't be making any snow. So just make sure that that's not kinked, and also check that you've connected the fluid connector nice and tightly, so that it's not all leaking out. 
said, this connection should be quite easy to put on. If you're struggling to put it on, then there's something wrong. So you need to take it off and check again. Um, if after all that you still can't make it snow, then give us a ring. So when you've finished the machine, um, you need to take it apart. And it's just a reverse of putting it together. Unclip the airline, remove the fluid line. Remember to push in the little blue collar and then pull. Comes away quite easily. Don't, don't be tempted to yank at it, you might damage the machine. Next, undo the remote cable. Just unscrew it like that, pops out. And if you could just put the dust cover back on for us, we'd be grateful. Uh, that keeps contamination out of the connection. And then disconnect it from the mains. Pop the machine upright. Take your mains cable and adapter and just pop it in the top of the machine. It's a really useful thing to do. It keeps it out of the way. It stops the cable getting damaged and it also stops you tripping over the cable when you're maneuvering the machine. And then the gray remote cable, again, just pop that down inside the nozzle for us. Uh, 